Hi everyone. So in this video, uh, we are going to talk about containers. So containers are actually a standard way to package and deploy the application. Uh, so containers became recently became the standard uh, uh, default approach for the application deployment. And there are several reasons why containers became the default approach. So in this video, we are going to talk about what are the problems containers actually solving. So to understand that better, we need to understand the traditional application deployment approach before the origin of containers. So let's consider a simple example. Consider we are going to we are uh, we are building a Node.js based application, and then we have to deploy that application in different environments. So consider we are, we are building a Node.js application, and and the application might might be nothing but it is serving some kind of an API. Okay. So once we build the Node.js application, which is serving some API, we have to deploy the application. So consider we got a server. So the first thing we have to do is we need to install the operating system. So just for example basis, uh, let's assume that we need CentOS operating system to run this application. So we install the CentOS operating system to the server. So once we install the operating system, what else we need? We also need to install the necessary tools and binaries to run the application. So in this case, since it is a Node.js based application, we need the Node runtime to be installed to the server. And, and let's assume that I prefer the Node uh, version 10 for the application. The application has been built uh, and targeted for the Node 10 version. Okay. And once the runtime has been installed, now the next thing is we need to install all the necessary application dependencies for the application to run properly. So in this case, we have to install all the necessary NPM dependencies. So once the operating system is up, once the runtime is there, and if you install all the application dependencies, now we are ready to deploy the application. Now the developers would deploy uh, the Node.js application into the new server, right? And the application would be running smoothly without any problem. Now we have to release this application for the testing team so that they that they can do the testing uh, testing activities. Now the testing team has to create a similar environment for them to run the application. So they again got a server. And the testing team has to uh, install the operating system. So they have to install the same operating system in this server. And also similarly, they have to install the same uh, runtime, node 10 in our case. And they also have to install all the npm dependencies. Now once everything is up and running, now the QA, now the testing team can install the application, can deploy the application into the new server. And similarly, uh, similar to the testing environment, we might need one more environment. So you create uh, for the uh, for the end users to reach your application, right? So you may create a similar kind of a server. You may install the operating system, uh, the node runtime, and the npm dependencies, and then you deploy your application in that server so that the end users can reach your application. Now all the environments are up and running. Your application is also running, which is fine. Now, one of the challenges that we could face in this approach is, consider for an example, if the testing team installed a different version of the CentOS, or if they install a different Linux distribution, or if they install a different version of the Node runtime, uh, consider they installed a Node 8, or if they missed to install some of the NPM dependencies in this server, the application might behave incorrectly in the testing environment. And similarly, if some of the configurations are different in the production environment, again, the application will be, behave completely different in the production environment. Now, this is where the actual issue comes into picture. The developers might still claim that the application is running properly in the dev environment, but the testing team would complain that it is not running properly in the test environment. It might be behaving completely different in the test environment and other higher environments. Now, how do we solve these kind of issues? So this is where containers comes into picture. So with containers, you actually define and declare everything that is necessary for your application to run in a single standard executable unit. And then you use that to run, uh, run in all the servers to get the same behavior. So there are a lot of tools and runtime engines available to create and run containers, and Docker is one of them. So Docker is one of the common and most powerful container runtime 
So the first step we have to do here is to create a Docker image. So let's say we create a Docker image. So you create a Docker image and then you declare and define everything that is necessary for your application to run. So in our case, we first need an operating system. So you clearly say in the Docker image that you need an operating system. So in our case, it's going to be CentOS. And then we need some kind of a tools and binaries to run the application. So in our case, we need the node runtime. So you install the node runtime also in the Docker image. So once we install the runtime, now we need to install all the application dependencies. So you do the same thing in the Docker image. So now your Docker image has everything which is necessary to run the application, right? Now you take this Docker image and you create multiple containers out of it and then you run the containers in the service. So this is somehow similar to the principle of OOPS, like you create a class and then you can create multiple objects out of the class, right? So in this case, you can consider the Docker image uh, is kind of a class and then you create multiple containers out of it that could be multiple objects of the class. So now you take this Docker image and then you run it as a container in each and every server. Now by doing this, since you embedded everything inside the Docker image, it doesn't matter whether your server is different, the application will give you the same behavior in all the environments. Now since everything is embedded within the Docker image, you actually don't need to have a node runtime installed in the server because that is actually running within your container. And you also don't need to have any NPM dependencies running in the server. And, and also you, you doesn't have to necessarily have the CentOS operating system here. You can have any other Linux distribution or a different version of the CentOS operating system. It doesn't matter because the required operating system is clearly defined within the Docker image and it is available within the container. So it doesn't matter which operating system you have in your host machine, it will not impact the behavior of the application. So similar thing is for other environments, you don't need to have any other dependencies in the host machine because everything is already declared within the Docker container. But you have to make sure that you install the Docker engine in the server. So this is the runtime. So without having a proper uh, Docker engine, Docker runtime running in the server, you cannot create and run containers in the server. So you don't have to worry about any other dependencies or the operating system. You just need to make sure there is a Docker engine running in all the servers. So by doing this, now you can run containers in all the environment and you get the same behavior in all the environments. So this is one of the main reason why containers became the default approach for application deployment. So in this video, we learn about what are the problems that we faced uh, before the origin of containers and how containers solve that problem. So uh, I have also given some other articles and links in the video description. Thanks a lot for watching. Audio jungle.